So album covers have two things that you have to worry about. You have to worry about the front and the back. So front, back, and then sometimes there's that little piece, that little strip in the middle that you have to design as well. So this is going to go on that edge of the CD. So this might be just as simple as writing the band name. You might have a little logo on it. Um, something to think about. So uh, you can even write things like front cover to let yourself know because you can cut this out. Back. And this would be the spine. Spin spine. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah. I have an idea of what's going on. Um, same kind of thing where you need to block out like how you're going to have, you know, the title of the artist or, you know, you can be a little creative with this. Um, on the back, typically there's either like a bio about the artist. Um, there's like the track information. I could actually spell today. So it has like, you know, song one, song two, song three, like, and list off those things. Um, and then typically somewhere on there, there's the, like the artist's actual face, um, or there's some really graphic stuff about like what's going on in there. So if it's about unicorns and ponies, they might have unicorns going on. So whatever you're choosing to do, this is pretty much the basic setup of how a book cover winds up working. Um, typically there aren't too many details in the back, but they do tend to be kind of blurry. So kind of soft, kind of faded. There is someone going on, something going on back there. But yeah, that's pretty much how you do um, an album cover. And then a logo. If you're going to work on a logo, you need to remember that everything has a copyright or a trademark. So is it, if it has a little TM, it means it's trademarked. If it has a C, it has a copy mark. It's copyright, okay? This one is way harder than this one. Okay, this one will not be happy if you use it. This one will just be less happy if you use it. So you need to think about your own individual idea. This isn't like, oh, I really like the Nike symbol, so I'm going to do the Nike symbol. No, this is, you're going to create your own adaptation. So first thing when you're creating a logo is you need to think about what you're selling. So are you selling books? Are you selling magazines? Are you selling movies? And what are those things going to be about? So... If I were to create a logo, I might have something to do with the fact that I'm an artist. So I might do something like a paint tube. So the type of tubes of paint I use, almost like toothpaste tubes. It's like that. And then that. And so whenever you're creating a logo, you want it to be relatively simple. You want people to be able to recreate it and to spot it pretty much anywhere they go really quickly. So these aren't supposed to be super detailed drawings. So that could pretty much be my logo. I'd have to take away some of these sketchy lines and make it simpler. Um, also, think about if it's really small, will someone be able to notice it? Um, how simple is it? All right. Um, how well can it be recreated? And color. Is it something that um, is only ever going to be black and white? Is it something that's going to be yellow? Is it something that's going to be blue and green? You need to think about color. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much a really quick idea of what goes on with um, a logo. Uh, and then cartoons, like I talked to you guys about before, they're not necessarily my best thing. So draw it on here. So a cartoon, you pretty much take that idea of a person and you kind of manipulate it. So you may think about all breaking all the rules. So making the person have a giant head, making the person have this tiny little body, maybe have like the tiny little legs, okay, feet that don't really make sense. You know, maybe they have this giant hat. So, one of the thing about, things about a cartoon character is typically they can be recognized really quickly. So you need to think about something that really makes them stick out. So is it the fact that they're wearing a striped shirt? They always wear a striped shirt. 
Or is it the fact that they're always wearing a hat? Or they're always wearing an apron because they're an art teacher? What is it? Um, and then put them in their scene. So, like, where are they going to be? Are they always going to hang out, like, at the mall? Is that, like, their thing? So there's, like, a bunch of storefronts. So this is a storefront. And there's, you know, stuff in the storefront or whatever. Okay. So put them in their scene. Figure out where they belong. Um, who's around them. Are there any other characters that they hang out with? So that's pretty much what happens. Pretty much just break all of the rules when you make a cartoon about drawing a person. Um, and really think about what makes them unique and individual and iconic. It's really fun to base um, a character off of yourself. Maybe there's something that you want to explore more about yourself. So it's really fun to do a cartoon cartoon character like that. Also, hair can be pretty important in a cartoon character. Um, and accessories can really make or break them. So yeah, um, some basics.